Let's start looking at hemologic malignancies. Now, aplastic anemia is not exactly a malignancy, but it fits in with this group because you've got to analyze pancytopenia. Polycythemia vera, essential thrombocytosis, and myelofibrosis are also all leukemic type syndromes. Aplastic anemia is pancytopenia. Pancytopenia means all three cell lines. The whole marrow is shut down. Now it's pancytopenia of unclear etiology. So this next thing that says you must know that any infection or cancer can invade the marrow and cause decreased production or hypoplasia of the marrow. That pancytopenia can be from radiation or toxins shutting down the marrow, toluene, insecticides, benzene. That it's the direct effect of sulfa drugs. Phenytoin causes folic acid deficiency and can also shut it down. Carbamazepine, chloramphenicol exists only as a cause of board questions and pancytopenia. Overall, probably the single most common of these is actually alcohol because when people are chronic alcoholics, the bone marrow just does not grow when it's pickled in alcohol all the time, and certainly chemotherapy. You can have it on an autoimmune basis. Lupus can damage all three cell lines, and PNH, which is a clonal stem cell disorder. Various infections. Why HIV and hepatitis B and C and CMV and Epstein-Barr suppress the marrow is not known. It's not known. Why do they also provoke cancer? Not known. B12 and folate deficiency could do all three cell lines. It's not just red cells. It can do all three cell lines. And the thyroid inhibiting medications, the oxidative inhibitors, the thyroperoxidase inhibitors, propylthiouracil and methimazole can have an idiosyncratic suppression of the bone marrow. Aplastic anemia presents with the fatigue that comes from anemia, from infections, from low white cell counts, bleeding from the thrombocytopenia. The most accurate test is the bone marrow biopsy. Now, aplastic anemia is confirming that all of the causes we just described are not there. In order to say it's aplastic anemia, you must confirm by excluding all the causes of pancytopenia. Then it is pancytopenia of unclear etiology or aplastic anemia. You must treat any underlying cause that's identified. Treat that lupus, treat the B12 and folate, get rid of the alcohol, treat the cancer. Then, if you still have pancytopenia, also blood transfusions and antibiotics for infection, platelets for bleeding, which is basically the concrete meaning of supportive therapy. That is supportive therapy. Transfuse the anemic, treat the infections, platelets for bleeding. Now, aplastic anemia is really, it acts as an autoimmune disorder. For some reason, the body's own T cells turns around and rejects its own bone marrow. T cells turn around and say, hey, you're not my marrow, let's get rid of you. And the T cell attacks the patient's own bone marrow. Cyclosporin inhibits those T cells. That's why we can use it as treatment. That's also why it is that we can use cyclosporin to bring the patient's marrow back to life in the same way we use cyclosporin to prevent organ transplant rejection. We can use cyclosporin to prevent the progression of aplastic anemia because what happens in aplastic anemia is the body's own immune system rejects itself as if it's foreign. Now a true aplastic anemia, not just secondary to a drug or a toxin or an infection you can cure, but an aplastic anemia, meaning pancytopenia of unclear etiology, if you're young enough, you get an allogeneic bone marrow transplant. If you're young enough and you're matched, and young enough means under 50. Over 50, if you're 55, 60, 70 years old, we do an allogeneic transplant, the transplant itself will kill you. Now, if you're too old for a bone marrow transplant or there's no match donor, then we use anti-thymocyte globulin, anti-T-cell globulin. That's what thymocytes give the name to, T-cells. The T-cells what's rejecting your marrow. So let's control it by getting rid of it with antithymocyte globulin. Let's control those T-cells with cyclosporin. Let's prevent the rejection of yourself. And tacrolimus and mycophenolate, sirolimus, these are other T-cell inhibiting drugs that we use to bring the marrow back to life. This is exactly what you do if you had transplanted a marrow into someone or transplanted a kidney, you'd use cyclosporin and tacrolimus, sirolimus to control the immune system to prevent rejection. The next disorder, polycythemia vera, is exactly the opposite of aplastic anemia. This is an unregulated overgrowth, predominantly of red cells, but it can be of all three cell lines. 
If aplastic anemia has an unregulated undergrowth, this is the unregulated overproduction, red cell production, overproduction, and it results in a JAK2, Janus kinase 2 protein. Now, this is new for many of you. JAK2 is the standard test now. You've got to exclude hypoxia and you see a JAK2 mutation for this and essential thrombocythemia because JAK2 mutation damages the ability to regulate marrow production. And that's why the red cells grow wildly, despite the fact that there's no erythropoietin. You must exclude hypoxia as a cause of increased red cells because it's normal for erythropoietin to make the red cells grow. It's polycythemia vera if the red cells are growing without hypoxia or erythropoietin. The symptoms of hyperviscosity are for increased red cell mass. These symptoms are headache, sludging, blurred vision, tinnitus, ringing in your ears, hypertension as it sludges and more pressure has to be exerted. You get very tired because how can you move your blood around if it's so thick? It's a hyperviscosity syndrome. The spleen becomes big because the spleen tries to suck up the extra abnormal blood and the cells become so filled with red blood cells, the blood vessels become so filled with red blood cells that they actually can burst, they can burst dam. And you can get thrombosis from hyperviscosity because it's sludging, it's sludging. You get itchy, often following a warm shower because of histamine release from basophils. The same happens in CML and chronic myelogenous leukemia. Basically, polycythemia vera is the blood just doesn't flow because it's too thick. Polycythemia vera is in markedly elevated hematocrit above 60 to 65 percent in the absence of hypoxia or an elevated erythropoietin. That's the whole point. The erythropoietin is down, but the red cell count is up. Now platelets and white count can be up as well. They don't have to be, but they can be up as well. There's an increase in the total red cell mass, and that's the whole point. Renal cell cancer is associated with an elevated hematocrit in a small number of patients, most of the time it's just anemia from people bleeding. But in that case, the erythropoietin level is elevated because the kidney cancer is actually making erythropoietins, like an erythropoietin secreting tumor. Now, in order to call it polycythemia vera, you have to exclude hypoxia as the cause of erythrocytosis. The oxygen levels must, by definition, be normal. B12 levels are up because basically a transcobalamin goes up. The carrier protein goes up. Now, it's not clear why the B12 carrier protein is up. That is unclear. It's not reason. Like, it's up because the carrier is up. Why is the carrier up? I don't know. Because it is. Iron levels are down because it's being used up. It's all been used up. And this is another key. There's very few causes of a microcytic erythrocytosis. In other words, cells that are small, but there's many high numbers of them. So an MCV that's low, but an increased number of them is basically thalassemia hypoxia and polycythemia vera. Thalassemia, hypoxia, and polycythemia vera. The most accurate test of polycythemia vera is the JAK2 mutation in 95% of patients. There are an increased number of basophils as there are in all myeloproliferative disorders. And a small number can convert to acute myelogenous leukemia. And it's the basophils that have the histamine which make you itch. That's why patients with P. vera often complain. They say, I'm feeling itchy, particularly after a hot shower. Our next disorder is essential thrombocytosis, sometimes called essential thrombocythemia. Essential means I don't know what caused it. Essential thrombocytosis means that platelets are up really high and I don't know why. It's platelet cancer. If CLL is lymphocyte cancer and CML is neutrophil cancer and polycythemia or vera is red cell cancer, this is platelet cancer. Now, platelets can go up as a reaction to other things, but they don't go up as a reaction to be up over a million. Because the platelet count is up so high, sometimes they work too much and you thrombose, you clot. Sometimes they don't work enough and you bleed. It's very difficult sometimes to distinguish from an elevated platelet count from a reaction to like an infection or a cancer or iron deficiency from essential thrombocythemia, except the number. There's two ways to distinguish them. The number of the cells in essential thrombocytosis is one, very high. Number two, there is a JAK2 mutation in about half of cases. And it's between these things, a really high platelet count and a JAK2 mutation that you make the diagnosis. Remember, 
platelets go up as a reaction, like a white count, a sedimentation rate, a C-reactive protein, a ferritin, a transcobalamin. But in the case of reactive thrombocytosis, it's five or six or 700,000, not over a million. The treatment for essential thrombocytosis is also somewhat unclear. It's not too clear if a person has a really high platelet count and is asymptomatic what to do. Now, if a person is young and has an asymptomatic high platelet count, but the platelet count is still under one and a half million, you should just leave them alone. Leave them alone. Don't do anything. Now, if the person is older or they have thrombosis or the platelet count is up above one and a half million, if they're older with thrombosis, then you should use some treatment. And that treatment is hydroxyurea. Hydroxyurea lowers the cell count. And hydroxyurea, that's all it does. It just lowers cell counts for this and helps sometimes in CML if you have a leukostasis reaction. Hydroxyurea is a chemical haircut. Now we use it also in sickle cell disease to be able to decrease crises, but it was originally developed as a chemotherapeutic agent. Now it's much more effective than enagrelide, although enagrelide is a one disease drug. The only thing with, for which we use enagrelide is essential thrombocythemia but it's not as strong as hydroxyurea. And anagrolide will be able to help suppress those platelets. If the person has thrombosis or painful red hands, painful red, red, erythro, malalgia, algia means pain. If a person has painful red hands and essential thrombocythemia, erythromelalgia, then we use aspirin to help the platelets from clumping together. We use aspirin to prevent those platelets clumping. Remember, young and asymptomatic, leave them alone. Older and symptomatic, hydroxyurea, sometimes with an agrolide. Myelofibrosis is bone marrow fibrosis. It occurs in older patients and it's associated with pancytopenia. Basically, the marrow fibrosis is off and we don't know why. And blood production, because the marrow gets all fibrosed off, shifts to the spleen and the liver. That's called extramedullary hematopoiesis. The bone marrow growth shifts outside the medulla of the bone marrow. And that makes the spleen and the liver really large. Now, the most characteristic blood finding of myelofibrosis is these teardrop-shaped cells. The cells squeeze through the fibers and they get shaped into teardrops, pointed. And nucleated red cells are sending early precursor cells out because the nucleated red cell, remember, is the precursor to the reticulocyte. The treatment, well, we didn't used to have anything. We used to just uh, transfuse them. Now we have thalidomide and lenalidomide, tumor necrosis factor inhibitors, TNF inhibitors, and they really help. This is a miracle drug for this disorder because we went from no real treatment to some treatment, and that's pretty miraculous. Now, some patients, if they're truly young enough, can get an allogeneic bone marrow transplant. That's the only way to cure it. So myelofibrosis, pancytopenia, big spleen, look for teardrop-shaped cells, and treat with lenalidomide.